This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. Neonatal patients often require long-term vascular access for the delivery of life-sustaining medications and nutrition. Peripherally inserted central catheters in neonates or neonatal picks offer several advantages over other central vascular access devices. Neonatal picks can be inserted at the patient's bedside with the use of an analgesic agent and radiographic verification and remain in place for several weeks or months. The small diameter of its lumen is ideal for the extremely small neonate. In this video, we will review the relative indications and contraindications of neonatal pick placement. The initial preparation for the procedure, equipment used, the neonatal pick placement procedure, major complications related to neonatal pick placement and its use, and catheter removal. A neonatal pick is a peripherally inserted vascular access device with a tip that terminates at or close to the heart or in one of the great vessels, the superior vena cava or the inferior vena cava. Candidates for a neonatal pick include very low birth weight infants who require continuous parenteral nutrition, infants who require long-term intravenous access, infants who require infusion of fluids or medications that have hyperosmolar or irritating properties, infants who need a dedicated line to deliver a critical infusion of life-sustaining medication, and infants in whom peripheral access cannot be achieved or maintained. In general, there are few contraindications for neonatal pick placement. Avoid the use of a central catheter in the following circumstances if possible. When there is an active bloodstream infection, when there is a thrombus in the desired vein, when parents do not provide consent, and when the vascular access can be achieved with a peripheral or midline catheter. Examine the patient to determine the options for vascular access. Determine the size and number of catheter lumens needed for the patient. Use the smallest diameter possible to decrease the risk of thrombus formation and use the catheter with the fewest number of lumens possible for patient care. The use of lumen sizes two French or smaller is associated with the risk of blood cell lysis and catheter occlusion. These sizes should not be used for routine blood draws or the routine administration of blood products. Commonly used insertion sites are the arms, legs, and scalp. The veins of the hands and feet are other possible sites for neonatal picks. The basilic vein is larger and less tortuous than the cephalic vein. The right basilic vein is preferred over the left because of the more direct route to central circulation. The axillary vein is large and provides a direct route to the subclavian vein. Be careful to avoid cannulation of the axillary artery. Scalp veins are easily visualized but may become tortuous at the level of the ear and on entrance to the subclavian veins. Moving the head to a midline position during insertion may facilitate catheter advancement to the central circulation. Leg veins offer multiple sites for neonatal pick placement, but it may be difficult to advance the catheter at the level of the femoral fold. Obtain oral or written consent to place a neonatal pick from the parent or guardian according to your institution's routine and policies. Select the appropriate type of catheter for your patient. Have radiopaque contrast material available if its use is anticipated. Put on a cap and mask before opening sterile equipment. Many commercial neonatal pick trays are available. Most contain an introducer, measuring tape, antiseptic solution, iris forceps, syringes, gauze, sterile drapes, a tourniquet, scissors, 
a trimming device, adhesive skin closure strips, a clear occlusive dressing, a flush, and labels. Use both pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic methods of pain control when placing a neonatal pick. Swaddling, caregiver support, and oral sucrose reduce pain but do not eliminate it. These methods should be used in combination with other analgesic agents for optimal pain control. Patients on continuous opioid infusions can still have pain and may require an additional opioid bolus to manage pain associated with the procedure. Determine the location for insertion of the catheter and measure the anticipated catheter length. Make note of the centimeter distance. You will use this centimeter measurement to guide catheter placement depth. For arm or scalp insertions, measure from the insertion site along the course of the vein to the right sternal border and to the level of the nipple line or third intercostal space. For insertions into the leg, measure from the insertion site along the course of the vein to the level of the diaphragm. When using an insertion site in the arm, turn the head toward that arm to help reduce malposition of the catheter in the internal jugular vein. Neonatal pick placement is a sterile procedure and the use of maximum sterile barrier precautions is required. Be certain to scrub and put on a gown and gloves as you would for any sterile procedure. Prepare the desired insertion site with antiseptic solution and allow it to dry. The safety of chlorhexidine solutions for premature infants and infants less than two months old has not yet been proven by research. Therefore, choice of antiseptic solution may vary according to institution and patient population. When using povidone iodine, remove the povidone iodine after drying to prevent tissue damage, absorption, and thyroid suppression. Flush all lumens of the catheter with a saline-based solution, ensuring that there are no imperfections or breaks in the catheter. When using a catheter with a stylet, pull the stylet back such that its tip is retracted approximately half a centimeter from the catheter tip before trimming the catheter. In accordance with institutional routine and manufacturer recommendation, trim the catheter to your pre-measured length. Some manufacturers provide special trimming devices or guillotines, while others recommend only sharp, sterile scissors to trim the catheter. Peel-away sheath or breakaway needles are common introducer types. Inspect the introducer for imperfections. Many clinicians prefer to flush the introducer to verify patency and prevent blood stasis within the introducer lumen. Puncture the vein with the introducer needle. Observe for blood return. Stop advancing the needle once you observe blood return, lest you puncture the posterior wall of the vein. Withdraw the needle when using a peel-away sheath, then insert the catheter through the introducer to the appropriate pre-measured location. The catheter should advance with ease. And now illustrated on the patient. Puncture the vein with the introducer needle. Observe for blood return and remove the needle from the introducer. Slowly advance the catheter. When the catheter is properly located in the inferior vena cava or superior vena cava, blood should return with ease. Remove the introducer from the skin while holding the catheter with gentle pressure to ensure that the catheter is not retracted. Remove the introducer from the catheter according to the manufacturer's guidelines. When using a stylet, ensure that the catheter has been properly flushed and remove the stylet slowly to prevent damage to the catheter. The most common complications during neonatal pick placement are malposition of the catheter tip and bleeding at the insertion site. Catheters placed in the arms and scalp can thread up the internal jugular vein, back into the venous systems of the arm or scalp, or across the innominate vein into the contralateral subclavian vein. Catheters placed in the feet and legs can enter the contralateral femoral vascular system the lumbar vein, or renal veins. 
While maintaining a sterile field, you may retract and reposition the catheter in an attempt to obtain central placement. Bleeding at the insertion site of the neonatal pick may not subside with pressure held at the puncture site or may resume with efforts to clean and dress the catheter. In these circumstances, apply a sterile surgical hemostat or gauze at the site before the application of the sterile dressing. Assess the site 24 hours after placement and redress as necessary. Stabilize the catheter with adhesive skin closure strips and obtain x-ray film for confirmation of catheter position. The ideal location for the catheter tip is in the central venous system in the superior vena cava or inferior vena cava, just proximal to the right atrial junction. In this location, the catheter tip is most likely to lie parallel to the vessel wall and the infusion enters the bloodstream at the point of highest blood flow. This is described as one centimeter outside the heart in a premature infant and two centimeters outside the heart in a full-term infant. Radiopaque water-soluble contrast material may be needed to enhance the visibility of neonatal picks or may be used as part of an institution's routine. Administer enough contrast material to approximate the intraluminal volume. Most neonatal pick lumens are 0.3 milliliters or less in volume. When the catheter tip lies within the area of the inferior vena cava but does not advance to the region of T8 to T10, or when the catheter takes an unexpected course or bends, kinks, or curls in the area of L2 to S1, it may be malpositioned. Consider obtaining a cross-table lateral film to ensure that the catheter has not entered lumbar or renal venous circulation. The catheter can erroneously divert into the ascending lumbar veins before reaching the inferior vena cava. The ascending lumbar veins arise from the iliac veins at the level of L5 to S1. Renal veins exit at the level of L2. If you are unable to advance the catheter tip to central venous circulation, you may consider using the catheter as a midline. Position the midline catheter tip so that it terminates in the proximal portion of the leg, parallel to the femur, or the arm parallel to the humerus or in the external jugular vein in the case of a pick that is placed in the scalp. Blood should return with ease when the tip is in midline position. Infuse only peripheral strength intravenous fluids in a midline. After correct placement has been verified, stabilize the catheter with adhesive skin closure strips and cover with a sterile, clear, occlusive dressing. Maintain visibility of the insertion site, coiling any unused catheter away from the insertion site. Do not encircle the extremity with the dressing. Place a sterile catheter cap on the end of the catheter. You may now connect new intravenous fluids and new tubing to the neonatal pick. Complications of neonatal pick placement include central line associated bloodstream infections, catheter migration, catheter fracture, occlusions, distal edema, thrombus formation, phlebitis, pleural and cardiac effusions, tamponade, and arrhythmias. The maintenance of proper catheter position and adherence to aseptic or sterile technique during catheter care will aid in the reduction of catheter-related complications. Remove any neonatal central catheter when it is no longer needed. Neonatal picks should be easy to remove. Cleanse the removal site with the appropriate antiseptic and gently pull the catheter out. Document the length of the catheter that was removed and check the patient's record to verify that the catheter has been removed in its entirety. When the removal of a neonatal pick is difficult, redressing of the catheter and another attempt at removal after a period of several hours, flushing of the catheter or surgical consultation may be required. Vascular access is an important component in the care of the sick or preterm neonate. 
It provides life-sustaining parenteral nutrition and medications. Medical practitioners caring for neonates should be well-versed in the skill of neonatal pick placement and catheter care.